This is what I get for the permittivity plot when there is no body. So this is for epsilon. You can see that it's epsilon naught, 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12, until we reach the air snow boundary. So here is snow starts. Then it increases slightly since the relative permittivity of one is 1 1.6 for the snow. And then it increases again here for the ground. And this is what I get for the permittivity plot when there is the body included. As expected, the permittivity is quite a bit higher here where the body is located compared to the other materials. Then for the conductivity, this is what I have when there's no body in the snow. Before it was helpful to plot the conductivity on a log scale in the PML. But since the conductivity is zero in the air region, a log scale isn't going to work as well here. So the PML is the reason for the very large values here on the left side of the grid. And if we were to zoom in here, we could see that it's ramping up here quickly uh, over just the last 10 grid cells. Over here on the right side, we can see a little bit here where the ground starts. And finally, this is what the conductivity plot looks like when there is a body in the snow. And here, the body is, conductivity is also quite a bit higher than the rest of the materials. Lastly, also before we run the model for the full 55,000 time steps, let's plan out what output we want to generate and plot from the full simulation. It might be good to plot the EZ fields across the grid. So EZ across the grid during time stepping so we can see where the wave is propagating and whether the behavior of the wave over space and time looks correct. So this is the same kind of plot we've generated before during time stepping. Another thing we will probably want to do is save EZ at the observation point just below the source. So we can compare the results when there's a body included in the model versus not included in the model. First, for plotting the EZs across the grid during time stepping, the code will run a lot faster if you only plot every 200 time steps, uh, just as we did for the PML test. And also, when plotting the EZs across the grid during time stepping, it helps to see what is going on if we mark where the material interfaces are in the plot so that we can see more clearly if a reflection is being generated at the correct locations and what is causing the reflection. Here's a section of code that you can use or use as a starting point for adding lines and labels into your plot for the different material interfaces. So why limit here? This stores the limits of the model in of the plot in the y direction so that we can draw lines straight down. So here, for example, we could label this as air and this is snow. So if we want to draw a line straight from the top of the plot to the bottom of the plot, we need to know the, 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 the y dimensions of the plot. So that will be stored in y limits. And then this plot draws a line. I surface is the I location where we're going to have the line located. And it extends across the grid in the y direction from the first y limit to the second y limit. And here I just have a black dashed line. And then the same idea here for adding the line for the ground and the body. Here I made it red for the body and green for the ground. And a line for the lower side of the body, which is also red. And then lastly, here are some uh, adding some labels. Here is the eye uh, grid cell where I put the label. And here I had the Y location of the label depend on what the limit of the plot was in the Y direction. And I did it, I put it at 7 eighths across the grid. So in the Y direction, if this is the full dimension, 8 over 8, I put the label uh, just below the top of the, the grid, the, yeah, in the Y direction. And so the other labels as well. And I made the font the same color as the lines for the body and the ground. 
I will upload a file uh, along with the slides for this lecture so that you can easily just copy this into your code and, and change it however you like. This is what my plot looks like after I add the lines and the material labels to the grid. I didn't label the PML, it's over here, and the source is also over here, and our observation point. Second, for the observation point, you should already have an observation point implemented in your model from when we used it to test the PML. So now we'll just move it so that it's just below the source. So easy ops is easy i source plus 10 unless you're using some another variable here to store that value. I also recommend you save the ez ops array at the end of the simulation after all the time stepping is done. You can do this by using save and then putting in the file name and the array name that you want to save and then we can store it as ASCII data. And so specifically I wrote save ez ops dot dat, that'll be the name of my file, and I'm saving ez ops and then as ASCII. So now we're ready to run the full model for all the time steps. We should run the model two times, once with the body and once without the body. The only changes we should need to make between both runs is one, you can comment or uncomment the place where you set the conductivity and the permittivity of the body. And the second change, the only other thing we should need to change in the grid is change the name of the output file output file so for example here i'm saving easy obs as easy obs dat if you include the body maybe you want to call it the file easy obs body you don't want to save it to the same file name or you'll overwrite your data from the first simulation for now, just run the model without the body and we will compare our results. 